Hello, this is Eric Bobro, and this ArchiCAD video tutorial will teach you a few things about ways that you can work with insulation, either symbolically or as part of your 3D elements for your sections and plans. The question came in from Stan Mallory, a member of my ArchiCAD coaching program, who asked, uh, how do you use a library part in ArchiCAD 22? Doesn't seem to be able to be stretched as before. And he sent us a little screenshot of the fiber insulation object. Now, I'm going to show you in Master Template Sample Project how this works. This is a project that's provided with Master Template as a way of teaching how to use ArchiCAD effectively. It includes both 3D and 2D ways to do things because not everything has to be done in 3D although it's easier and easier to do it. So for example, the insulation in this particular part of the section is part of the slab, so it's done purely in 3D. There is a composite here that's got insulation as part of it. If I go and I open up that composite and look at it, you'll see that it's got a component called wood framing insulation. That's a building material that has this particular fill in it. Let's take a look at how the building material is set up under the options building materials and you'll see here's the wood framing insulation it's going to be pink in a 3D view and it's going to have this particular insulation 01 fill in a section which has been set to fit to skin meaning that it'll stretch to whatever the depth of the cavity is. Now let's take a look at that insulation 01 if I go to options fills and we'll see that it is part of the group called symbol fills. Let's see, here's the symbol fills and here's the insulation 01 and if we zoom in on it we'll see that this is the actual piece that's being repeated over and over again with certain settings. Now you don't have to create this yourself. This is built into probably all versions of ArchiCAD for the quite a few years um, as a symbolic fill that will stretch if you set it properly as part of a building material. So that's what's used there. But if you wanted to put it into, say, this roof, I know we've already got insulation here in the ceiling, but if you were going to be putting in insulation in a roof um, and you wanted to do it in 2D, you could do use an object. So if I go into the object tool and I search for Insole, like for short for insulation, then it's going to come up with any objects that fit that, um, that text string. And here you can see is one of them. Now, <clears throat> when we, um, if I go back to the default, sort of by clicking away and, and back, you can see that it has a certain standard length and certain settings. It's cutting these off straight, but if we were to type in a value, we could have it cut off on angles. But instead of typing in values or typing in a different length, we can stretch this directly on plan. Now I'm going to turn off the edges here because we're going to be putting this into the um, a cavity and we already will have some lines on it. And where two pieces of insulation meet, we don't really want to have an extra line. I'm also going to change the contour pen, the pen that it's drawn with, to a special pen here, 131, which is a nice gray and you'll see in a, a little later why I'm using that specific pen because it gives me some extra controls. Now to place this I can just use the standard object setting and go click and you can see it comes in at a sort of a default arbitrary size which I can then select and stretch. So if I go to the magenta shaped editable hotspot and use the move node option in the pet palette then I can just stretch it to whatever length I want. I can also go to the center node here and make it bigger or smaller as I wish and then snap it to fit the cavity. Go to the other bottom hotspot and again I can make it go to the end and then if necessary I can adjust the angle here. I think this angle doesn't really need much. Let's go and um, let me just get this a little bit tighter to there. Um, in here, we'll take this, stretch it to there. Okay, now it fills up. Now, what about on the diagonal? So I'm going to go slide over here and I'll go use the geometry method where we rotate on the fly. So now I can go in, click, and rotate this on the angle and then select this and stretch it back 
to that meeting point there. Stretch it here. So the angle was easy to set simply by snapping to the edge there. I'll go ahead and make this smaller and then snap it when I can see the edge more easily there to fit in. Let's see, go up to there. And then you can see that I can go to the edge and you can see how it's giving me more or less. If I take it back, you'll see what I mean and take it up to this point. So I don't have to type in an angle. I can simply set it visually by moving my cursor and snapping there. Let's go to the other side here. One more piece and we'll again go and place this. And uh, I think sometimes it's actually it's actually a little hard to see um, this because it obscures it. Um, so I'm just going to take it down and to make sure that I get that correct and then stretch this here back and make it shorter. Now I could type in the thickness of the cavity, but it's just as easy to snap this into position right on the fly. So I'm just essentially going and tracing these things. So now we have our cavity looking pretty good and we could take it across the whole thing if we wanted it. Um, now this could have been, this roof could have been done with a, um, a fill, a uh, building material just like that and it would look similar. But in this case, I'm just demonstrating how you could do a partial one and sometimes you want to just put it on part of it and imply that the rest is insulated there. Now let's take a look at another variation which is a wall here. Now this wall actually is a complex profile that has framing and I believe if I go down here you can see that it extends down to this point. So the framing is built into it, although we do have a couple of 2D elements above and below the windowsill because they don't extend the whole length of the wall. Let's take a look at how that's done. If I go to the profile for it, we'll see the wall profile come up. And if I select this, you can see this is the same building material that we had earlier. And it is just oriented going this direction and filling the cavity. Now how did we get the framing? Well this was originally a composite that just had multiple skins, was converted into a profile using the option to um, uh, just uh, I think capture the, the uh, composite and turn it into a profile and then this was pulled back to give space for the framing. Now the framing is done with four separate pieces of uh, triangular pieces to create what is one uh, plate, one piece of lumber. Um, that's because Archicad will not draw lines between these unless it sees several uh, different pieces. Uh, so that's a little trick that I'll demonstrate in another video tutorial coming up soon. Now all of this looks good in the section as we saw and it will look good on the plan as well. You can see the insulation nicely cleaning up around all of this. Now sometimes you want to see the walls in a simpler fashion. So there are ways to do that. In the old days with Archicad you would use the model view options to do that. You go into model view options and you'd change it here. But model view options now is only available for certain things like how the doors are shown. And if I change this to for example a presentation schematic view we've got this set to show the doors and windows in a much simpler fashion. You can see what's going on there. Now to switch the ways that the interior of the wall is shown, we'll use the graphic override option. So if I go into graphic override combinations, these were introduced into Archicad 20, we might switch um, this to something that would show the schematic plans or a simplified drawing here like this. So with a simplified drawing it's set up to do the cut fills in an empty white manner. So that rule here saying all types that are cut through put in an empty fill and put in a white pen or you could use the window background the same thing but only for the things that are cut through. So that is a graphic override rule as part of this simplified drawing and this is what's going to give us the nice view here. Now we can 
go and save this. And in fact, in Master Template, we have schematic views part of it. So if I double click on this, you can see it actually simplifies some more things um, in uh, some of the settings that are uh, adjusted as well. Now, if I go into um, the, uh, if I, if I want to actually put this instead of just a super simplified view, I want to just get rid of the insulation then we have, might take a different approach. So for example, here we have the construction document view. And here, I'm going to switch my pen set to the view that is used for plotting, where the pens have been switched to a black for many of the uh, uh, lines. But here, I'll take another variation where I've changed just one pen, that pen 131 I mentioned earlier, to hide these um, uh, the enclosed insulation. So that is done simply by having a pen set. So here's the original color pens. Here's a variation for plotting. And here, look at this, this particular pen here. When I click on this, you can see it goes to white because that's the only change between these two here. So that's a little trick that I figured out a long time ago that allows you to hide something like the insulation. Now, if I go to the section here, we haven't changed it there, so we're still seeing all of the insulation uh, symbols, etc. I can go and, let's say, switch on the fly to hide the insulation that way. So that's a great way that you can um, get particular types of drawings uh, done by manipulating either model view options, graphic overrides, pen set, um, etc. So I hope you found this useful. This is uh, my pleasure to share it with you, with all Archicad users. As a little add at the end of this presentation, this is part of Master Template. Master Template has all of these things set up to make it easy for you to use in your projects. The sample project is a great way to study how to do things in 2D and in 3D. For example, um, in uh, certain areas, we may have this as a 3D profile, but in other areas, let's take a look at this, uh, we may have a, something similar that's done purely in 2D. So this is a 2D stud object and a 2D, um, uh, different variations of that. So those are purely done in 2D, but if we look here, we can see this is a 3D complex profile. and it can have as much detail as you want. For example, the tongue and groove information uh, there. So this is all done in 3D. If I say open this, we'll see that it is simply a set of fills that define those views. So in Master Template, you have examples of ways of modeling from simple to complex, from 2D to 3D and going into data as well. So hope you take a look at Master Template sometime. It will be a great asset for you to get your project started quicker and get them done more efficiently and to a higher standard of excellence. So this has been Eric Bobro. Thanks again for watching.